everyone, I'm here with Alex, who um, talked about designing in VR and VR in AEC world in general, which is really interesting. So I grabbed him for a short interview to tell you all of the things that he told us in his presentation. Because I really like your approach to designing in VR and maybe you can tell a bit more about like yourself and what you do. Yeah, well, thanks so much. So I'm Alex Coulomb, I'm the creative director of Agile Arts Immersive Design. And I've been working in VR since uh, 2013. I came from an architecture background, and I've always been really interested in how new technology yes. can help to enable design. Um, I'll admit that when I was in architecture school, freshman year, we weren't allowed to touch a computer, and I was like, oh, I'm kind of smudgy, and like my drawings don't look really clean, and yeah. my models get glue on them, and I was thinking, like, I might have to drop out. And then second year, we were allowed to touch a computer, and I was like, oh, wait, hold on, I'm good at this part, maybe I'll be okay. And so I was very quickly interested in software and hardware and new technology that might help me take all these wonderful, great ideas in my brain and better communicate them. So, and I'd say communication is the operative word, like that's the thing that I'm working on the most is how can designers better show what's in their head to the other people they're working with as other designers as well as the clients and users and owners of the projects. Yeah, but, but um, the, sh the showing of the design was only a small part of your presentation because this is like, this is what we all know. We all know that you can walk around your 3D model with VR glasses and show it to clients or everything. But you was also about like designing in VR and you had a really interesting approach to that happening and showed how easy it can be. So maybe you can tell a bit more about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so a misconception I find that people have is they think if they're going to start designing or working inside of virtual reality, that it's going to be a similar level of pain to what they experienced going from hand drafting to say AutoCAD or AutoCAD to BIM like Revit. And because that was a huge shift and, and a lot of offices have really struggled with doing something like that. And in reality, what I find when I'm trying to teach someone how to draw on a very intuitive program like um, Tilt Brush or Gravity Sketch or Master is they start to realize very quickly that it's a lot like just drawing in a sketchbook. You have another dimension, there's another plane there, but you know, like if I put someone in tilt brush, they can actually totally ignore their left hand and they can just use their right hand and literally wherever their you know finger is, that's where they're gonna be drawing. And so it's always funny too, because the first thing someone always draws is something that should be flat, they'll draw like a square or something, mm -hmm. and then they'll tilt their head and be like, oh wait, but it's all bent and shifty. So it's kind of fun watching people figure out like, oh wait, I'm drawing in space, and then be able to scale up and scale down and think about how that's affecting the experience, because it's quite fun. I, I've seen people do something where they'll, they'll draw something that's like a very tight space, and they'll be like, oh, this is a, a really compressed you know, area, and now I can imagine going over here, and they'll scale the model down, create this giant atrium and then be like, oh, and then I go from this tight space into this big large space. And what I like about that, that I think is missing in a lot of VR experiences, is there's still a sense of imagination. There's an opportunity for people to talk about a gesture or a, a design direction without actually prescribing this is going to be a floor that's this thick or a wall that's this thick and this is going to be wood, this is going to be concrete, and this is where the daylight is coming from. So it's quite nice, I think, to use something like sketching or some of these simple VR modeling tools early on in the design process, especially if a company wants to try to stand out in a competition or if they're just going through a lot of concept iterations because then it still has a lot of the same properties of a sketch but more with the human experience of what it's like to be inside of the design. Yeah, and also there's a lot. A lot of people are, are scared about with it when it comes to BIM that you have to be that you have to know so many things early on before you can start to work. There's a misconception that you need to set all the parameters and all the materials and everything. So when you can just start to sketch, that would be I would imagine that would take a lot of the, the fears from people. Yeah, and that was uh, I know we're at Autodesk University, so we shouldn't bad mouth in the Autodesk, but um, a lot of people have that problem moving to Revit. They're like, I just want to draw a wall, and it's saying, yeah. how thick should the wall be? What material is the wall? And so sometimes the, the world of BIM can force people to get too specific too fast. And then a lot of design elements of a project can end up being more of a byproduct than an intentional thing. Like thinking about AutoCAD and even when people were hand drafting, you know, you would draw two lines and that would represent the wall, but you drew those two lines, so you're thinking about what that represents. And sometimes in something like Revit, you might be creating these three 
painting walls, um, but you're just drawing it in plan and then you never actually look at it in section and you're missing the human experience of it. You're still thinking orthographically, but then yeah, you end up with a lot of design decisions that are, are byproducts more than anything else. So VR, designing in VR can force people to still always have in the forefront of their mind what's it like to be walking around. Oh wait, that's a really weird condition. I don't think we should be doing that. Sketch, get sketch, sketch, let's change it, bring it back into Revit, here's the more precise version. Yeah, also you're always in the human scale, yes. so if you're doing like a little sketch, you can sometimes like trick yourself and lie to yourself and make the proportions so that it looks cool but it might not be working in reality. Yeah. But when you're like really walking around and imagine everything like the railing going up to here and so you, you can't cheat and so you have the full like phenomenology, what's yes. the word you use? Phenomenology. Phenomenology. Word, yeah. <laughs> and so tech wise. What, what, what is required to, to start sketching in VR? Yeah, well it's funny, we're in front of these headsets. Yes. None of these headsets will let you sketch in VR. Okay. These are some great standalone headsets, Mirage Solo, uh, Vibe Focus, and then just kind of your standard glasses, very non-committal. Hey, look, a panorama. Um, to sketch in VR, you need some kind of VR headset that actually uses hand controllers. Think of these, but, but better. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the problem, is these have controllers, but the controllers only have what we call three dog tracking, three degrees of, of freedom, which means that you can rotate, but you can't move it around. And there's a headset that's coming out later in the year from Oculus Rift. The code name right now is called Oculus Rift Santa Cruz, and that will allow you to have a totally standalone wireless headset where you can draw with your hands. But right now, at this moment, you would want to check out. Uh, it's on the floor, it's okay. Uh, Vive, Vive Pro, Oculus, any of the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, because those all come with controllers. And just to talk price points, what, what's actually quite nice about the Windows Mixed Reality headsets is that the cheaper end of the spectrum, 200 pounds. 200 pounds to get a headset that has hand controllers that will let you draw. And guess what? Uh, because it's made for Windows, it works with most Windows computers, even ones that aren't really made for high-end rendering. Yeah, so if, if you work in an office and there's Windows computers there and the computers aren't that old, um, good chance you can spend $200 on a headset like this, plug it in and just get going. And then the software is very cheap too. Tilt Brush is like 20 bucks. Um, some of them cost something every month, but it's like 30 bucks. So uh, it's very affordable. And how much space would you recommend? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, because uh, when I first started doing stuff with virtual reality, I just had like my little cubicle area, so yeah. I was always bumping into everything. Um, it can be quite nice to have, I'd say at a minimum, it's really nice to be able to have at least, um, oh, I gotta think of meters right now, at least like three meters by three meters, I'd call that a minimum. Um, and um, the, here's the thing though, there's a misconception that drawing in VR can be really exhausting, because everyone imagines the person who's like like a Rothko painter, like all over the place, you know, in the air, and you can do that, but also, guess what? You can sit down, you can be sitting down the whole time in a very small space, and kind of be resting your, your hands on your knees, and um, it's a very, I want to say lightweight, not too exhausting way to design. So I have seen people actually stay in VR drawing for a couple hours without getting too tired. I, I personally really do like to be moving around a space, so for me, like 10 to 15 minutes is a, is a good VR design session. But it's good to know that it is possible to be in VR designing for a long time and, and not pass out from exhaustion. Well, thank you very much. My uh, pleasure. Yeah, well, thank you for answering all the questions. and. Uh, yeah, I will be, I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun walking around the, the everyday exhibition. I hope you guys do too. Thanks so much. Real quick, let's do, um, how about we both put on a headset for a second? Just to have a good photo op sort of thing.